It's a really unique organization in the sense that you know, we, we invest in artists. We like to support work that uh, challenges our notions of technology and society. Um, and uh, we like to think that we're pretty good at choosing artists that are um, quite visionary in terms of how they uh, create work that propels our you know, cultural conversation about these issues. This is a space for artists working around, in and around technology. Um, so for me, the idea of working around people who A, get the technologies um, to a great extent, or at least have the capacity to speak to you on a level that's knowledgeable. We're all thinking really around these ideas of inclusion and biases and, and bringing people into the fold and making the fold wider. We want to create a very safe space for artists to experiment, uh, to have at least a period of time where they're not sort of being buffeted by the winds of capitalism, that they're not uh, necessarily in, you know, kind of a mode of scarcity trying to find their next gig, but to have a chance to actually um, think and have the freedom and time to experiment. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. If it works, great. Artists and designers at iBeam seem to have a very strong vision of what they want to do, and technology is tamed for the purpose at hand. You know when they say that you're not wearing a dress, but the dress is wearing you? Whether it was an archive of rap or it was little bits, you know, it was always about a good project and technology was brought in uh, however necessary. So that's what I always loved, that it was always good design and good art to begin with. Essentially we exist to ensure that artists are at the center of the invention and design of our shared future. Like that's, that's what we do. And the day that artists are the ones that are at the table when it comes to you know, policy decisions, when it comes to civic decisions, when it comes to design decisions, when artists are centered in that way, then there's no more need for, for us.